thing you wanted to know about CK Editor 5, but were afraid to ask. I am Kevin Pittman. I'm the Web Services Architect for the Ivan Allen College of Liberal Arts at Georgia Tech. And if you want to follow along with these slides, they are on my website at webdev-prez.iac.edu. Um, you can access them now or later on as you wish. Um, let me fix it. It's not look very good. Hopefully I lost my screen. <laughs> Here we go. Hopefully that's a little more readable. Yeah. Future ways of presenting. Okay. So a quick little bit of background about me. Um, I have uh, been with Georgia Tech for longer than I've not. I uh, went to school there, graduated with a computer science degree, stayed on for 16 years with the central IT unit doing web application administration, and then I finally decided I'm sick and tired of being on call all the time, and I like development. So I made a horizontal move over to the College of Liberal Arts where I became their first web developer. And my primary work at the time was they had tons of websites built in all manner of systems and they needed to get it all unified under Drupal, Drupal 7 at that time with the standard Georgia Tech web theme. So I was spending most of my time my first few years just converting websites um, and I quickly developed a standard set of tools to support that. Uh, modules that I use on every website and one of them was a module to automatically configure CK Editor, customize it the way our content managers wanted it, but also kind of locking some of the things down so that they'd be uniform no matter what site you went to. And so uh, that all worked great until this new version of CK Editor, CK Editor 5, came out. And that's where we'll begin. So I do want to make some quick disclaimers. I am far from a CK editor expert. I am a site builder, a site administrator with Drupal. Uh, I use CK editor from that perspective of getting it configured for our content people and then I do some content building myself. But I'm not a programmer. I don't contribute back to CK editor or anything like that. So I'm coming at it from the same perspective I expect most of you are. It's basically, I've been supporting it for my websites. Now five is coming out, and I need to figure out how to make that work. My solutions that I've been building, they're working, but they haven't really been tested in production because it's too early to put CK Editor 5 in production on any Drupal site. So... In fact, you know, the CK Editor 5 in Drupal right now is still very like pre-alpha stage and very buggy. So actually one of my plugins, I just upgraded my Drupal to 941 and one of my plugins is broken. And as far as I can tell, it's not my side of it, it's the Drupal side, but you know, I can't do anything about that until they fix the problem. So your mileage may vary, use at your own risk. This is all information to try to educate you, but you'll have to wade through the ever-changing environment as it keeps changing. So I'm not going to read everything up here, but I wanted to give you a quick overview of where this all came from and where we are now. I assume if you came here, you know what CK Editor is, I hope. It is a JavaScript base, what you see is what you get, or rich text editor that can be embedded in web applications. It was created in 2003. 
Uh, version 4 was released just a little over or around a year after Drupal 7 came out. Drupal 7 still did not have a built-in text editor. If you wanted a text editor, you had to add a third-party module and would integrate some kind of a text editor. And so a lot of people started integrating CK Editor 4. Third-party plugin or module was available and it became pretty popular, popular enough that the Drupal developers said, let's make CK Editor the core content editor with Drupal 8. And so that happened with the release of Drupal 8 in 2015. And all was you know, pretty much well. Then the CK Editor developers came out with version 5. The first version of that came out in 2018. And eventually they set the end of life for CK Editor 4 to be the end of this year. I have yet to find an exact date, so I'm thinking that may actually change and get pushed out, but I'm working on the assumption that it may reach the end of support as early as the end of December. So the core team, they've been working with Drupal to integrate CK Editor 5 and get it ready for Drupal 10. That has not been easy. That has pushed off the release of Drupal 10. It was supposed to kind of come out as early as last month. It's been pushed forward to August and now to December. So the release date is presumably going to be sometime, I guess, mid-December. I think that's a must-release date because of other dependencies, but I'm not positive on that. So it's been challenging for everybody, not just for us site administrators. There is some interesting features to CK Lecture 5, and I want to give you a quick overview of what to expect with it. Um, I have no idea what all the thumps and bumps are, by the way. It's been going on all day in this room, it seems. But, um, so one of the big things is that there's now multiple editor types. That said, I think Drupal's only going to support the classic, which is what you're used to seeing in CK Editor 4. But maybe down the road, there'll be ways to select some of the other types. Inline, balloon, balloon block, they all sort of approximate aspects of Gutenberg. If you've used WordPress or Gutenberg and any other product, so it's trying to bring the tools closer to where you're editing instead of it floating at the top of the, um, or stuck at the top of your content area. Um, and then there's a decoupled document editor, which is really designed for when you need your users to edit content that might be printed or might be saved as a PDF. So it's more like a full-fledged word processor. And you can create your own editor type if you can think of something that they haven't done yet. It's very open. The whole architecture is open. Um, as part of that, they've created their own model for the data. This is where it gets you know, a little tricky if you have to start building a custom plugin to support something. Um, no longer are they working directly with the HTML document object model. They are converting to their own object model. And so there's these processes. There is the HTML view to the model, which is called upcasting. That's basically taking your initial content, converting it to what CK Editor uses in memory so that it can then work with it. And then there's downcasting, which is going the other way. When you're ready to save, it's got to convert from the object model back to the HTML. So in your plugins, there's a lot that's built around creating these rules and processes for how to upcast and downcast. You can have multiple upcast paths. So you can take multiple implementations in HTML and all map them to one um, one model type within CK Editor, which can be useful if you've been doing things different ways, if you've marked um, a certain type of uh, custom paragraph style in several different ways, you can unify that into one way of marking it up. And every time the content is edited, it will be unified when it's written back out to that one particular way. Everything in CK Editor 5 is a plug-in now. Uh, yeah, all of the core features are individual plugins. It's got its ups and its downs, but one upside is you can look easily at the code for one particular feature, like bowling or superscript or something, and see how that's implemented. 
and that can help you learn how it works if you need to write a plug in. Um, the downside is they now expect that all of your plugins will be compiled or um, aggregated together into one ckeditor.js file. And that's the normal way they expect people to use this. That doesn't fit with the Drupal model, where they want the ability to provide a plugin through a Drupal module and have it installed in real time. So Drupal is having to use this feature called a DLL version of CK Editor. And so things work a little differently there from how they normally tell you on the CK Editor site to build your plugin and, and get it working inside a copy of CK Editor. If you want all these details about what's new and more, uh, there's a link there. You, the, you can follow the full details on the slide to uh, read the entire blog post from the CK Editor folks. So I pulled together some demos just so you can see what I'm going to be talking about. And this way, when I start talking about these pieces and parts, you'll have seen it already. So this is what we have in CK Editor 4. And I'm sorry, the screen is very faded, so it's hard to see the lines around everything. But um, So I came up with this t toolbar layout based on what um, we had been using in Drupal 7, trying to improve upon it a little bit. Um, everything over on the right side is pretty much standard stock features that came in CK Editor 4. Where I had customized, I did a little bit of customization on the format menu, removing some things like Heading 1 that I didn't want people using. The vast majority of customization had been on what's called the Skiles dropdown. And the Skiles dropdown is a place designed for you to plug in your customizations just through configuration. So you don't have to write an actual plugin. It's in your config file, you can define individual styles, indicate what the class name is for that style, or you could even indicate that you want specific CSS styles applied with properties and uh, values. And it takes care of everything for you. It's pretty powerful. But it's pretty complicated too, and CK Editor developers decided they didn't want to support that anymore. So their answer to that is, you should go write a plugin if you can't fit those kind of things into some of the other existing plugins that are a little more customizable now. So I had things like custom gold headers, um, an introductory paragraph, custom button style, these apply to links, so this makes a regular link look like a button following the standard for their Institute communication set. Um, and then if you are on a list and open this up, you get some list styles that you can apply. Two columns, three columns, and four columns. I built these out because I had too many uh, content people wanting to do this, and they were trying to do it with tables, which is ex not the way to do it. You know, that it's not accessible, it doesn't come across right if you're on a screen reader. So I said, you know, I gotta give them the right tool or they'll keep using the wrong tool. Because you can't tell them, don't do that. They won't listen to that. So you've got to give them the right tools. Similarly for accessibility, I customized the font size plugin. And you could do this for just uh, feeding it specific configuration values. And you could change it so that it uses percentages. And I set up 80% all the way up to 150%. And that um, is preferred for accessibility over specifying fonts and point sizes or pixels. Um, so all of this was not hard to do. All of this I did through configuration. The only thing I ever added through a plugin was something I created early last year, and that was a plugin to filter content being pasted in from Word. And any of y'all who were here last year, I did a lightning talk about that. That, how that filters out all that junk that w Microsoft Word wants to put in the HTML. So um, I thought, okay, this probably shouldn't be too hard to get into CK Editor 5. So here's CK Editor 5. Now, the first thing you might notice, that was a little bit slow to load. That's not just my computer. It is a lot more code doing a lot more stuff on the background. So you're going to see that. It's going to be two, maybe even three seconds for it to load up the editor and 
and that may even impact loading the page. Um, but that's just the way it works. So you still have a drop down that has heading formats, they now call it headings, and it also supports paragraph formats, and it supports um, even a few other things that are paragraph-like, like preformatted. Like but it, they've done away with the inline styles that used to be on there. So for example, code is now provided as a buck instead of being something on the format drop-down. This is customizable, and I'll show you how you can do that. That solved about maybe a quarter of my problem. <coughs> the font size, the font plugin is still there. Font size is available, um, but the documentation doesn't tell you of any way to customize it like this. It only says that you can customize by deciding which of the predefined values like tiny, medium, small, large are up there and the ordering. Or you could set, I think it's pixel or point, pixel or uh, point size, one or the other. But when I started digging into it, because I said, I guess I'll have to write my own font plugin, I'll have to copy the code and adjust it, I discovered it actually supports a full definition for any particular font size. And through that specification of a full definition, I got this all working and added everything in that I needed. So I didn't have to write a plugin for that, yay. <laughs> um, so the next thing was my buttons. Well, I had to do a plugin for that. I couldn't see another way to make that work. But that, I was able to copy another plugin and just tweak it and adjust it and get it working. And so if I'm on a line with a button or with a link, either one, I can change it as I wish. I can go back to plain links. You can see it really is just a link. And go back to gold. The last thing was those multi-column lists. And um, I spent about a month headbanging trying to get this working. I've discovered there's still some issues in it, but it mostly works. Um, but this required some extensive plugin writing, which I'm not hugely familiar with the JavaScript side of this stuff, so I've been learning a lot. But you can see what it looks like. The buttons are a little bit bigger, a little easier to read, and part of that is because all the buttons are now SVG, which is really helpful. The old buttons were uh, bitmaps, so they did not enlarge very well. So let's go back to the presentation. So to kind of summarize what I've shown so far, uh, there's a new plugin integration method, and so that means that any of the plugins that were being brought into Drupal through a module that bridged the plugin in, that all has to be rewritten. The module, that is, has to be rewritten because there's new ways of, of bridging those in. So anybody who maintains an existing module will have to rewrite that module. Anybody who has to write their own custom plugin will also have to write a module and learn how that works to integrate the plugin into their Drupal site. Configuration settings have been rearranged. Uh, plugins used to just throw their configuration keys at the top level of the CK Editor config. Now they go one level down under a key called config. So if you were already customizing CK Editor, you'll have to take that into account as you port your configuration over. As I mentioned, the styles drop down is gone. So you're going to have to review, if you're using that, you'll have to review everything you have there, figure out where can you move it to. And you may have to write your own plugins or hire someone to do that if you need some of those styles and you can't implement them through configuration. So let's look at the workarounds. The first one is what I call programmatically modifying config. So some config options are exposed in the text formats GUI in Drupal, but not every one of them. It's just what whoever wrote that module thought should be exposed. Um, so things like adding, adding new styles to the headings dropdown or reprogramming the font dropdown, you can't do that through the GUI. You have to go in on the back end and inject that stuff into the CK Editor configuration. And so 
by doing this, you got the, have a chance to change those keys that you can't get to otherwise. But you can also lock it down, because when you change things this way, it overrides anything set in the GUI. So you can take control over anybody who has administrative rights on the Drupal site that doesn't have access to the back end and can keep them from adding buttons or moving buttons or changing settings that you don't want and changing. So that's kind of useful too. You know, that was kind of my main goal at first was I want to just set the same thing on every Drupal site that I run so that I know they're all the same and work the same way. How do you do this? Here's a hook. Hook underscore editor underscore JS underscore settings underscore alter. <sighs> Take a breath. And that one gives you access through a, a reference that gets mapped to whatever variable you give it um, that references the entire settings array for the all of the different editor text all the different text format um, editor assignments. So you can go down in there and you can modify anything you want and then that in, immediately takes effect. So I mentioned that the config keys change. I want to take this as a quick moment to talk about how that structure looks, what it looks like. So when you get down to the CK editor part of the configuration, you're going to see four keys. There's toolbar. This has an, a, um, a key underneath it called items, and that's where your entire toolbar is stored. So if you want to programmatically configure the buttons and the order they're in and which ones are there, you can modify that directly, and it will override anything set in the GUI. So that's how I uh, set the same toolbar arrangement on every site programmatically. Plugins, you probably don't want to touch here, but it will show you the list of known plugins that have been enabled otherwise. If you're going to add a new plugin, there's a different way to add it to that list, um, and that's the method you should use, not trying to modify this key. I do want to note that um, plugins are identified differently than they used to be. So in that array, it's going to be file name without the .js that the plugin comes from, and then the actual a dot, and then the actual plugin class name. So you need to be aware of that. Uh, if you don't specify it just right, it won't include the plugin. Then you'll have the config key, and every key under that will correspond to one of the plugins. And then underneath that, you can set any of the config options. You can look in the CK Editor documentation. It does a pretty good job of telling you what options each plugin will take. And then body class is, uh, gives you the ability to specify the class name assigned to the content body of the editor so that you can target CSS rules to it. So this shows you how it works to go about changing settings programmatically. So you'll have a module, a custom module, and you'll define this hook. And the next thing you'll do is you'll loop through everything that is under settings, under the key editor, under formats. And that's going to be an entry for each one of your defined text formats. Um, unfortunately, they're not keyed by the machine names that you can uh, see when you look at links within the editor GUI, it's keyed by integers. So you're just going to have to go through them one by one. And then if you want to target a specific one, you can see the line I commented out here. You can check the key format underneath the um, format definition and see if that machine name matches the one you want to change. What I do is I just check the key editor and if it matches CK Editor 5, um, then I make my changes. So that means every format that uses CK Editor 5 will be the same. For me, that works. For some people, they may want a simpler one for basic HTML and a more complex arrangement for full. In that case, you'll need to check the individual formats. If you are doing this in CK Editor 4 as well, be aware that um, you may not have thought about checking this. You may have been changing them all. Well, you want to check now, and this value will simply be CK Editor without the 5. It doesn't have a 4 on the end. It's just CK Editor, and that means it's version 4. And if it has the 5 on the end, that means it's version 5. 
I found some weird things happening when I didn't check that carefully. I was applying five settings to four and vice versa. So once you know you want to change something, you dig down into the formats configuration under editor settings. And at that point, you're looking at the CK editor stuff. And so I'm going to go into config, which is where all the plugin config is stored. I'm going to go into heading for this example. And I'm going to take the options under that, and I'm going to just reassign it completely and give it a whole new set of options. And in my actual code, there'd be about maybe 10 of these stanzas, but I'm just showing you one for simplicity's sake right here. And this shows how you define something in CK Editor. Um, so title is going to be what shows up in the dropdown with human readable description of this format. Class lets you assign a specific CSS class to the title. So that's how the titles show up already formatted, like the gold H2 header showed up bigger and in gold. That's because I assigned a class here to the title. Model is the internal CK editor model name. This has to be unique across the system, so you probably want to make it long. You may even want to preface it with a uh, the, the plugin name just to make sure it won't clash. Um, and then view is what this is represented as in HTML. So this is a paragraph, a p tag, and it's going to have a class of IAC dash introduction. So this creates two rules within the system. It creates the upcast rule, which says any content coming in that's a paragraph that has the class name IAC introduction, it will be upcast to a CK editor intro paragraph. It also creates the downcast rule, so that when I tell it I want to save the content out and save the page, it downcasts all intro paragraphs into uh, paragraph or P elements with the class name IAC introduction. There's no way that I know of to specify different upcast and downcast rules for configuration. If you want to do that, as far as I know, you have to write your own plugin. Um, converter priority. This is how it orders all these different rules that are being created and decides which one it's going to do first. When you're creating these custom rules, you want to set it to high. Otherwise, there's a chance that one of the lesser rules, like the basic paragraph rule, would get processed first. And since a basic paragraph will match a paragraph that has the IAC introduction class, it would treat it as a basic paragraph and never run this rule. Setting these to high has been run first, and we will hopefully catch all your custom stuff before it tries to run the simpler rules. Here's another example. This is how you would reprogram the font size dropdown if you wanted to do custom things there. I left out the initial code, but when you get to the point of making changes, you dig down into editor settings, config, font size options, and you set up similar stanzas. This is where I want to point out how this is processed varies by plugin. This is not 100% standard. So um, this one, um, has a priority flag, and everything is set with these priority flags, whereas that's not used in the heading plugin. So you may have to tinker with things, you may have to read the documentation, you may even have to read the source code to just see what's available. But um, once again, you've got the uh, text that we show in the drop down. and you don't have to put a class name here because the font plugin automatically assigns whatever you tell it down here to the title. So another way that it's different. Um, so these titles will automatically be the size and format that you have specified. Um, the model internal, the HTML view, and this shows how you can use uh, style properties as opposed to class names. I would prefer not to do this anymore, but this was the only way it worked in CK Editor 4, so all our content it's marked up with these, uh, you know, style font size equals, uh, or font size colon 90%, font size colon 80%. And so I gotta have it this way or it would not process the old content. It would just strip all that out and everything would be normal font size. 
if I had the gumption to write my own plugin, then I could do those multiple upcasts, and I could upcast this as well as a class name, and then have everything write out as just a class name for each font size. And that'd probably be a little more modern, forward-thinking way of doing it. But this also shows that you can intermix full definitions with predefined keys. So this is a predefined key for normal. Um, and that will just drop the normal option in there between 90% and 110%. So you can mix and match as you wish to get the arrangement that you want. So the second half of converting and customizing is at some point you may need to enable an extra plugin. Um, even if you don't support one of the third party modules that does that, you may need to implement this for your own custom plugin. And so the best place to start, there is a nice landing page on the Drupal site that has tried to aggregate all the documentation. This was a lot of useful stuff right here in one place. And then there is a CK Editor DevTools project. And this project has a module. It's not been, doesn't have a release yet. So you're gonna to have to go to the Git repository to download it. But the module, in, the module activates the CK Editor Inspector, which is very useful when you need to debug. Um, I, it is this bar down here, which is hard to see because it should be dark gray, but this projector is fading everything out. And if I expand it, um, you can see that um, it's showing me the tree of the object model. So I can look at all these things. I can see I have a GT heading uh, level two with no bar at the top. That's GT heading two and B. Then I have a regular paragraph, another regular paragraph. I have some pre-formatted text. So I can see how it converted my content. Now I can see if it did something wrong or unexpected. I can dig into properties over here on the right side. Um, I can see all the commands that got defined and all the schema types which are getting cut off over here. Uh, the schema types are basically those rules that you have put in that come from every plugin that's enabled. So it's a very useful tool. And uh, as I said, the DevTools module will activate that for you so it will appear everywhere that CK Editor 5 is used. They obviously, you would not turn that on in production. You only turn it on on a development site. It also has a template. So it has a template for a module sitting inside that module. And that template shows you exactly how to integrate a plugin. So it's got the files you need. It shows you all the possible keys and what you can put with them. Very helpful to get you going. Uh, I'll show you the basics of it though, just because I think it's helpful for someone to step through this. So the first thing you need is the plugin. And you need the plugin compiled into its own file. Some of the plugins that are already out there will come with that sitting in the build directory. And you can hopefully just grab that and put it over into your module. If you're building your own plugin, you're gonna to have to set up to compile it into its own file as opposed to you know, being compiled into a single copy of CK Editor. One thing to watch for, because we're using that CK Editor 5 DLL version to, in order for plugins to be added on the fly, it needs all of the dependencies specified the same way. And some plugins, you're using an old style of specifying the path to the dependency, and some are using a new style. Um, I should say, I meant to throw this in here, I forgot. All of this compiling is being done through Node.js. So you never had to really think about Node.js prior to CK Editor 5. Um, but now they want you to do everything in Node.js. You bring in all of the dependent libraries that way. And so that's where the dependencies come into play. It's you know all those extra libraries that it uses or even other CK other components that it uses. If your dependency specifications don't match, you're gonna build all this, you're gonna try testing it in Drupal and the editor's going to crash. And it's gonna crash because it'll say it's trying to load the same library twice and it doesn't like to do that. So you'll have to check 
And if it's a third-party plugin, you may have to modify it and recompile it. And if you're really nice, submit the changes back up to the repository and hope that they take them and fix it for the next release. If it's your own plugin, then you'll just have to correct your code until you get it right. Um, I provided a link here on the slides to some more extensive instructions on how to set up your Node environment and how to compile. I am not a Node expert. I cobbled this together through other things I found and some trial and error. It's working for me. Your mileage may vary, but at least it gives you something to look at. It gives you a starting point, which is more than I had. I'm just like kind of floundering out there trying to find information. So once you have that part, you're going to need to set up at least two files in your custom module that will bridge the plugin. First is pretty straightforward thing. In your library, has got YAML for your module. You're going to have to create a library definition that points to that JavaScript file. So it's a pretty straight setup. Um, the tags here that they're recommending pre-process faults tells it don't aggregate this JavaScript with anything else. And I'm sure that's because it's minifying, and I'm sure if you aggregate multiple minified JavaScript files, they're probably going to start clashing with each other. And then this is telling it's already minified, so it doesn't need to do anything more to it. Save time and energy. And of course, it's dependent on CK Editor 5. Now, of course, you can also set your module to be dependent on the CK Editor 5 module. So that's just extra, extra checking there just to be safe. And then this is the important part. This is how you include the plugin. So you have to create a .ckeditor5.yaml file. Each scan set defines a new plugin. Um, they recommend including your module machine name and then an underscore and then something that clearly describes the plugin. There's going to be two keys under it. ckeditor5 is all keys that get sent directly to ckeditor. And this is where you need that definition that I talked about before. So the file name without the JavaScript part, a dot, and then the plugin name. For some plugins like Font, there may be multiple names that could go here because Font provides at least three or four different plugins. It provides the font size, the font color, the font family. So you would specify each one that you want to include. Um, then the Drupal key, are, these are all keys that go into Drupal itself. So these mainly are providing, um, like label is providing a label that would show up in the GUI when you're editing a text format. The toolbar items is telling it what kind of buttons to show in the GUI that the administrator can grab and move around to put on the toolbar or rearrange the toolbar. Library is pointing to that scans in your library's got YAML file to tell it which library to include whenever this plugin is enabled. And then elements is important. Um, here you have to list any HTML elements that the plugin is enabling. So if you were writing something for uh, an element that's not been used, like maybe the HTML object element, you need to list it there. Otherwise, uh, if the administrator turns on the Drupal um, content filtering plugin, it would strip that out. So everything that's under elements gets concatenated together and becomes the base allowed whitelist for the uh, Drupal content filter. These have to be specified in normal HTML style, so it's literally you put there less than object greater than, or less than div greater than, less than p greater than. Uh, you, in the old days, you just listed the, the tag without the brackets, but now you have to include the brackets. You can also put properties there to whitelist specific uh, class names or styles that you uh, are needed for that particular plugin to work. So that's basically it in a nutshell. I hope it didn't get too terribly technical, but it's a technical subject. Um, yeah, I'm just about on time, so are there any questions? Yes? So I was a little flabbergasted that the Styles dropdown was missing, so I just looked and... I was too. <laughs> and like a week ago, they have a patch that's working. It just got it working. 
Oh, okay. Okay. So it's back. <laughs> uh, and I, if, if 942 is what's stable right now, it looks like 943 or 944 will what it be in, but the patch works on 942. Hmm. Well, that would be helpful. Yeah. <laughs> now, this is an ever changing thing, so half of what I said today may be different a month from now. <laughs> but, you know, any other questions? Okay, well, I wish you all luck. Yeah. <laughs> Hope your experiences go a little better than mine. <laughs>